Join me as we talk all things true crime. Made contact and shattered. Four-year-old. The parents have called me and the mother has written on a wall. Hey, mom, now they can't monitor. Turn it over to another agency. Chad, where are Lori's kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Once I told a lie, then I told my family. I, I had to keep lying. What's your I mean, is a demon? We haven't cleared anybody. Hey everybody, happy new year. Let me know if you can hear me. Hello, Melissa Jade and everyone who's joining. Hi, Johnny, it's good to see you. Sorry about that. So we left off discussing last week how um, we were going to go live on Friday. I was sick. My little one was sick. That was sort of why I was a little late right now, just getting her down to bed and making sure she's got her Vicks vapor rub and all that. So thank you guys for waiting for me. Um, I have my lovely guest, uh, CDT. I have pinned her TikTok link at the top of the chat. It's in the description box. And then I'll pin it in the comment section for replay viewers. So you guys can um, follow her on TikTok for more Watts content and her channel will be linked as well, where you can find some of our um, content from like last year and back in the beginning of this case when it started, we've kind of been discussing this for a while. So follow her on TikTok, subscribe to her YouTube. Um, I'm going to bring her on in just a minute. I do want to kind of discuss a little bit of updates from information from the prison and just talk about their holiday time. And it's been told to me that the inmates get their holiday meal at lunch. And then for dinner, they get a sack lunch, which is usually a bologna sandwich. And uh, they give people time off who work in the kitchen. So that's why uh, the dinners are like in a sack that it's given to them. It's already pre-made. Commissionary, they can order whatever they want and they get Axe body wash, uh, coffee, Snickers, all those types of candies. Um, Christmas was extremely cold there in Wisconsin, I was told. And Chris's family did not come visit. Not that they were kind of expected to. It was just informed to me that they, they didn't visit. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Thanksgiving meal, which is nothing great. It's processed food for lunch and dinner. And they get like that same sack type of dinner thing. Um, some of them work on Christmas Eve. And uh, let's see what else. Certain holidays. They, so certain holidays, they make sure that they get their sack lunches and stuff so that they don't have to have the people who work in the kitchen work the holiday. So I thought that was interesting that they kind of accommodate around the inmates who work in the kitchen to kind of give them the day off. That was kind of surprising to me. So certain things are kind of pre-made and given to them a, a differently at the holiday time. Um, let's see, what else? Somebody commented and said, and actually showed me a video that was out there stating that Chris takes care of people in the infirmary. And that is halfway true. So somebody else commented and said, it's been out for a while what his job is and he's a janitor. So that together is sort of true. So that's all I'm gonna say. Um, that he doesn't take care of people in the infirmary. He's, he works sort of like a, a janitor kind of role in that area, though. Um, that's already out there. So people showed me that. Um, let's see what else. He gets hate mail st still from people who say that they hope he rots in hell. Some of them write him love letters and tell him how much um, that he's being talked about on TikTok and on YouTube. In fact, that new information that came out about FBI releasing new information, and it actually wasn't new, it got back to him about it. And an inmate pretty much was saying that um, 
they all hear about uh, stuff that's talked about, even rumors, and they kind of laugh about stuff that's not true being said. And um, it's been said by an inmate that um, he didn't think anyone will ever know the truth. And, you know, people said, well, maybe we will. And this person just walked away. So apparently inmates don't think that what we have been told is the truth. So I thought that was interesting. And they don't think that we're ever going to find out the truth. But that's not going to stop all of us from digging and kind of wondering, you know, what the truth is. And apparently there's letters that Chris gets that he pins up on a cork board in his room, his cell. And it is true. I know people don't want to believe it, but general population where Chris is at can come and go as they please, as long as they are in their cells for count. So I know people want to think, and I myself included, want to think that he's just behind the bars all day. It's sounding like for him, it's just not the case. And for that prison, it's it's a little bit different. It's like a working prison, apparently. Um, let's see if there is any other updates that I can give right now. I guess the girls that write him are nothing special. Obviously, they're crazy. Um, but anyways, let me add CDT and we'll get back into everything we've been discussing together. Hello. Thanks for being here. Hello. Thank you for having me. And hello to everybody in chat. I hope that you guys are all doing well. Yeah, I know. It's what do you think about hearing how where he is right now? He can kind of come and go as he pleases as long as he's there for the count. And, you know, most of his day is spent working. That's very interesting to me. Like you said, I would just picture him locked behind his cell and he comes out to do his job, his free time or whatever, and then goes back in. So that is super, super interesting. We are trying to get CDT to 10,000 followers <laughs> on her TikTok. So make sure you guys subscribe over there. I will say that I think it's hard to find TikTokers like you that know the facts on these cases and put out like real information that it, it just seems like they're everyone's quick to put something out on TikTok way more than YouTube and then come to find out it wasn't true, like about him getting in a fight or whatever. Yeah, and then they don't want to correct it when you yes. tell them they're wrong. But yeah, my um so my YouTube got demonetized. I submitted the first round to try to get it back. They told me no. And then I just never tried to get my monetization back. Um, but yeah, I was getting a little bit burned out on true crime. I don't love editing. Going live, it was like every time I went live, I had internet issues. So I just kind of disappeared. Um, but yeah, I have been kind of getting back into TikTok and putting up the Watts videos. So I will be over there. And then maybe one day, I will fight with YouTube and get back on here more because I do miss everybody. And that's why I'm so glad to be here with Amber to um, see you guys again. We miss you and we're lucky to have you <laughs> pop on when you can. And I know that a lot of people love TikTok. So I'm sure people who are listening right now will go over there. Let me just say hi to Scottish Queen, Jay. I saw MK, Derek in here, Carol freaking Claus. We have a lot to get to, Pointer Lover. If I don't say hi, guys, I'm just kind of all over the place and we have a lot to get to. And Florida Bass Fishing has already complained to CDT and I that we're still on day one of this case and he wants us to speed things up. But you really can't speed up our type of brainstorming because both of us are very um, keen and, and hone in on attention to detail. And so we're kind of in this for the long haul. This is episode seven in the Enigma series. So... We'll get into, I think I want to do bits and pieces of what NK had to say about Monday. This video I've had on my channel for a while. It's a little bit longer. I'm only going to play, I think, 18 minutes of it. So CDT, you can kind of sit back and listen and obviously um, chime in when you want to. And I'll do the same. But this is um, the her accounts of what happened according to her on Monday. So I kind of wanted to play this since we have... It kind of fresh in our minds of what Chris has been saying, and we've seen him on day one. So we see what he's doing, um, and so we can kind of see if it matches up to what NK is kind of describing uh, when she's talking about he called me or he texted and all this stuff. And um, 
yeah, so we're just going to listen to small pieces of NK. I don't know if we're going to go through the interviews like we've done on CDT's channel with NK. We might. Um, but if you're looking for us to break down the NK series, you can find that over on her channel. And maybe after we go through this body cam and all that, we can get to her interviews. But right now, we're just going to listen to um, snippets of what she had to say about Monday. And these are from all her interviews. So it's going to be one has a little bit of a bad audio because it was a hidden microphone that the FBI agent Mark put in his pocket or somewhere so that, you know, he could record her without her knowing. And it never gave us the best audio. So I do apologize. I have tried to kind of um, write on the screen what she's saying. So I think he was the one that told me that. Oh, And hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so as well. And thank you, everyone who is joining. We see you and we appreciate you guys being here. Uh, that makes sense. Nothing like why she would be there. I know that makes sense. Um, and then Monday, I think we shot each other like a couple times at work but him and I get real busy both of us do at work so it was just kind of like and it was like just mundane bullshit conversation you know um and then one afternoon I came home from work and I was actually I had a friend over my house um who is not involved or knows anything about this at all but like I, I went to meet up with a friend and then um he kept he texted me and told me something along the lines of like my wife and my kids aren't home I was just like, okay. And yeah, then that was, he, that was on Monday. It was on Monday. Do you know what time it was? Uh, honestly, I'm kind of upset with him right now. Just disappointed with him. So I, uh, I'll talk to him right now. But um, probably, realistically, I'll tell you. It happened like right after I walked in the door to meet up with my friend. And I. Let me see. So Monday, I got off of work at 3 p.m. Takes me probably like 40 minutes to get home, and I had just walked in the door. So how about 3:45? That's probably about right. Okay. And so he he sent that then, and I was like really confused, but I wasn't concerned at that point because it was just like, well, what do you mean she's not home? Like she at the grocery store? I mean, it was just it was like, all right. I didn't realize like the seriousness of the situation at that point in time. Um, but no, she didn't come home that night. And then um, I talked to him that night too. And he really didn't seem like... I mean, he was like concerned about his kids, definitely. But he didn't seem like he was at that point worried that something horrible had happened. He was just kind of like, I don't know where they're at. It's stressing me out. And I, I mean, and I could hear it in his voice. Like he sounded kind of scared. Like he was just. So right there, she just contradicts herself. She's like, he didn't seem like, like pretty much was saying, it's kind of downplayed him being like worried or whatever. And then she says, but you could tell in his voice that like he was like stressed. And in my opinion, on the body cam, he looks stressed AF. Now, is if that's because he's busted, we don't know. Is that because the plan is falling apart? You know, it, there's so many reasons why he could have been looking the way he was looking. Like even in Nate's, when they're looking at the camera, you know, did they see other cars on that camera? Um, lots of reasons why he could have been stressed out. So I just find it interesting that she kind of tries to downplay his stress like on Monday when in my opinion, like he definitely seems stressed. I don't know exactly what, and I don't think we'll ever know, but I don't know. And then she just kind of goes back to saying that, like you could tell in his voice that he was stressed and kind of scared. And why is he scared? That can mean so many different things too, you know? Agree. And she did contradict herself. You're, you're right about that. Worried about them, you know. He's like, I don't know where she is. Like, I don't know why she did her stuff. I mean, so he was, he was worried, but it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, worried like I think somebody would sound if somebody they loved was not at home. 
you know. But at the same time, I think at that point, he was convinced, I was convinced that she probably just left the day. Like, I really thought, I was like, you know what, I bet she just needed a break from him and she needs some quiet and she probably took the kids and she'll be back in like a day. That's kind of like how I had it in my head. So, did he say anything to you about so at first when she's describing all this, and this is something that we've kind of paid attention to prior, she really doesn't talk about the kids as much as she kind of makes it seem like Shanann like kind of left. And then she'll throw in like after fact, like in the kids. And there's been times where even this FBI agent has had to like ask her like in the children. And she's been like, yeah, yeah. So for some reason, it's kind of like led me to think sometimes that the children and Shanann might not have left together. And, you know, did he take the girls in his truck and Shanann was taken out the back? I think that that's very possible. But if you guys pay attention and maybe you don't hear what I'm picking up, but in her interviews, when we get to them in, in a way that you can kind of hear like a flowing conversation about like this Monday, it doesn't seem like she will include the girls with Shanann unless she's asked or it'll be kind of like she's following up with that. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. It's like that. They're kind of like an afterthought in a way. And like you said, she has to be like probed. Okay. And the kids same with her not wanting to say Shanann's name in the um, like her third interview. I think it's just very interesting the way, um, she does seem to like want to separate them too, or, you know, them, her Shanann from the kids. Mm -hmm. And she's also not spoken Bella's name, right? Yeah. And like, she would only say Cece. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then she had to be asked like, or something. It was, it was sort of like her arm had to be twisted again, like to kind of talk about Bella. Right. So I don't know what that means, but yeah, like Perry says, she's distancing herself from the kids, specifically, I think, Bella, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, Derek said the kids were in that truck 100%. Shanann, not as sure. Now we're going to look at the discovery page also, like when it comes to the truck after we listen to this interview, because there are some interesting things and um, something about survey that I wanted to run by you, Kelly, and get your opinion on, because I searched the word blood. And I was just, um, I'm confused by this verbiage. So I want your opinion, chat's opinion, and replay's opinion as soon as we hear this. Whether anything was missing from the house, not missing, there's any you know, signs of anything uh, suspicious. Did he, he just said that she left. Or he, did, he didn't know where she was. He didn't know where she was. He didn't say she left. He's just like, I don't know where she left. And the kids as well. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think he sounded genuinely concerned. I mean, those are his kids. And from the impression that I get, he's a great dad. I mean, he's all about them. He loves those little girls. And so, you know, for me, I, like I could tell when I could like hear it in his voice that he sounded concerned. It was just like those little girls, I'm sure, you know? And and I think he's just worried about the whole situation. Like, I don't know what else doing or, or I, I don't know what to do. And I can't get over it. And then since um that you in that conversation that was different or that was odd did he say anything to you about anything with you and him? Like anything had changed or that anything was different now or nothing at all. Um, okay, so just seemed concerned about uh, Yeah, just like, like he was worried. You know, I mean I was worried too. I just didn't I I thought she just left for a day. That's really what I thought. And then again, like yesterday, when she just like didn't come home, I was like, oh, maybe this is like something really serious. And, and again, I mean, like with my friends, it wouldn't be something that would draw attention if I didn't talk to them immediately. And I knew that they were going through separation. So the fact that one person is leaving for maybe a day, that doesn't seem out of the ordinary for me to somebody who wants to leave. The fact that all of her right there i mean again yeah. like shenan's not one person there yes. are two basically toddlers bella not so much but um very young children involved and here she is like flipping it comparing it to herself and it's just so frustrating yeah that was like the perfect i that part always kind of went over my head 
where she says, you know, she's comparing like, you know, sometimes I, I don't know if it's in this clip, but sometimes even I like to take a, a breather, something along those lines, like in one of her interviews. And it's like, but she's, we're talking about a pregnant mom here. Like, do you understand? So it's almost like she does kind of keep Shanann separate from the girls. Now, what is that? We don't know what that means. You know what I mean? But she's still, I'll rewind it just a second here, but she pretty much was says like, you know, some people and you know, totally like bypassing the fact like, but this was a pregnant mother. And somebody asked earlier, where was Chris during this interview? This is her first interview that I believe was on Tuesday, the 14th. Um, Chris, was he handling like the dog stuff that day? Yes. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure like the exact times of the interview. I'm sure we could go back and look that up. But yeah, Tuesday was the dog interview or was when the dogs came. But was this Wednesday though? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think too. And I House think Huddle, you might know, and she's good on Watts info too, guys, if you want to watch her stuff. Um, was it I'll the look into it. Because I think, yeah, she called her dad Tuesday maybe. And that's, so maybe, I don't know, I'll look it up as we keep going, but we need to iron that out. And honestly, even like the fact that it took them this, that long, a day or even two days or whatever long it was, three days to find out about the mistress, you know, it's, it's very like, what? And, and they only found out about her. It's been reported in the media that she came forward. So she can't, you know, she's innocent. She came forward. She only came forward after Anna Darko handed over their company emails, right? Yes, that's in discovery. Basically, the timeline of NK being discovered, she already knew that they were searching the company emails, computers, whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's, in my opinion, why she came forward, because she knew that those emails would be found. And that's another thing, like we talked about in the last live stream, for some reason, mainstream media will keep like repeating the same narrative over and over. And um, um, she came forward and she was very forthcoming and went to the cops. And it's it's not true. Like it looks that way on paper. But when you read beneath it, like you said, mm -hmm. in the discovery, the timeline, you see that it was she was tipped off by probably somebody at Anadarko or whatever and, and or knew that, you know, they're going to get my emails like, you know what I mean? Right. And I think we have an entire live about that on my channel. That's like the media's misinformation in the Watts case. We probably touched on that. But yeah, you're so right. It It's fun. Like, oh, well, she was so forthcoming. She came forward. People compare her to Amber Fry. Like, it's just not the same. It's just not. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk to them immediately, and I knew that they were going through separations. So the fact that one person is leaving for maybe a day, that doesn't seem out of the ordinary for me to somebody who wants to leave. The fact that all of their stuff was still there, though, that to me was kind of strange. That she was going to leave? Did he ever say to you, like, one day she's going to be leaving, she's going to be going somewhere? He told me they had a conversation in the morning. And he told me that she, because she came home like really late, I think that night. And he told me that um, when he woke up, he was sleeping and he got back. And when he woke up, there was a text message from her that said to, I don't know if it was a text, I don't know. But she just said she asked him to wake her up before he went to work. And I guess he went to wake her up and she informed him that, uh, the child that she was carrying did not belong to him. And I asked him if he believed that. And he said, no, I think she's just saying that out of spite. I forget the little like edits that I added into this, guys. I did this video like three years ago. So I forgot that I added that like bomb explosion. But, um, you know, this whole she texted him, woke him up, said, you know, or wake me up when what did she say? I'm sorry. I was just thrown off by that bomb. Um, no, you're fine. Wasn't it like wake her up when he was leaving for work? Yes. Because she yes, needed a shower you. or something. Yeah. And then in the prison interview, um, Chris basically says something along the same lines and then says that he straddles her, like gets on top of her to have this conversation. Remember? Yeah. And, and Tammy was like, you know, kind of questioning that. 
it just, it is not the truth fully. And it's interesting to me that, you know, since we did that glove live stream last week or the week prior, um, I started thinking about like the fact that no one ever asks, um, no information obviously is put out, you know, whose glove that was, fingerprints, DNA on it, touch DNA, all that. Um, but then also where does the glove fit in when we're talking about this whole scenario of like them in the bedroom, having this like conversation that escalates, like why would any point would Chris be wearing a glove? You know what I mean? Right. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Like he's getting ready for work and then they have this discussion and it turns into this big deal. And then Tammy, not one person has said, why was there a nitro glove beside the bedside? Why was there one on top of the fridge? You know, like yes. you would think that at some point this glove would kind of be brought up even in that almost four hour interview of prison or however long it was. Not one time were gloves ever mentioned. They mentioned garbage bags and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just an example, in my opinion, that like shows it's not it didn't go down the way NK said. And it definitely didn't go down the way Chris said. And for some reason, we never get a follow up on those nitro gloves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The fact that they've never asked about that, it's like they don't want to know, you know. Yeah, and maybe they did because I believe that that was an interview was highly edited. I do too. I believe there were definitely redactions for sure. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Maybe they did. So I don't know if he's telling me that because he's trying to like somehow make me feel better that maybe it's not his kid because he lied to me or if that like legitimately happened. I don't know. Um, but he told me that, and then I guess he said that she said that she was going to, like, go to some friend's house or something. And I guess he tried to ask her about it a few times and wasn't really getting anything from her. So I think he left. Um, but I don't think it was, hey, I'm taking off my kids for three or four days. I think it was, like, this is what I'm doing today. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Did he say if that discussion they had in the morning, if that was contentious, if there was any, anything said, any threatening or anything that was you know, significant when that comes to Not really, but I mean, I'm sure finding out that the child that your wife is carrying is in yours is probably like, painful, but you know, he didn't express it in any way. Like, they were arguing. As far as I know, they didn't even really like argue that much in the first place. They just had different opinions on how to do stuff, and it just wasn't working on the marriage. But he was never like, oh, I fight with my wife all the time. Like, that would never, ever, ever be like, ever brought up to me at any point. Okay, so these dates in this video might be wrong, but did you see Scottish Queen's comment? She said she did the park interview on Tuesday, so that was the 14th, and then she went for an official interview with Kobeck on Wednesday, and that was after Chris is arrested, basically. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, go ahead. No, I think, yeah, I was just thinking, I know I have it all written down, but that's probably right. She's probably right. It's like they carried out what they had to do Monday, you know, way before she ever was going to think about coming forward too. You know what I mean? Right. And she called her dad, which again, like I can see like if you're innocent, like calling a loved one, your parent, like I can give her that. And I was actually watching the house huddles video and she kind of went down that road. Like, okay. In her defense, maybe it's understandable why she called her dad or whatever. But at the same time, it's just an interesting factor to the entire thing. Everyone can look at it how they want, but she did call her dad over and, um, he said something like, that's when we decided you guys. And again, I can't help but wonder, was Jim still there for that conversation? Yeah, the whole Jim thing we've honed in on and we definitely will again. Mm -hmm. um, as far as like statements she made, like, because so, at one point she said he was there like on Monday or something. Or yeah, no, yes, she said he was there on Monday. And then there were other times where she stated he was there, but then other another interview like, 
she doesn't mention him being there. So there is questions up in the air of like, was Jim there on that day and all this? And why was he? And, and she didn't mention it in this one interview, but she kind of does here. Mm -hmm. um, and Allison asks a fair questions. Do you think he put the gloves on because she relieved herself? And, you know, it's like, we have no evidence in the discovery that we see that shows that, you know, the tests they ran or the substances found on sheets or whatever came back as urine or fecal matter or even blood. Um, we don't know if that's true, that there absolutely was none, but I don't see anything that describes any of that being found in the house. Do you recall any? I don't. Other than, yeah, I mean, people debate like the coroner sheet, but it's never been stated like as fact that there was anything like that. Yeah. And the coroner sheet, you know, that's when they take her out of the shallow yeah, grave. That's and, you know, exactly. So it, it's hard to say. Like, all I know is that sheet out at Servi, the fitted sheet that she allegedly like was wrapped in or whatever. That mm -hmm. has nothing on it but dirt. Yeah. Almost in like a dragging motion, like pattern of dirt. Right. So again, lots of weird things. And we can hone in on the sheets and all that. But that's the thing, too, is we don't see. We have a whole video of the evidence locker and them showing up with evidence, the body cam, and they're hanging the evidence up, including her undergarments. But they never show that fitted sheet ever again besides those drone footage images. And I think that CBI picture of a CBI agent holding it. Yeah, that's very interesting. I never really thought about that. It's crazy. And like um, Lambs Bond 007 just said, why were the kids' bodies disposed of differently? Not only were they disposed of differently than Shanann's, but separate tanks. It's just puzzling. And they text each other like throughout the day, but we both get really busy. So some days like I don't hear a lot from him and some days I don't text him until like two o'clock in the afternoon because I'm just like busy. And I, I remember I didn't hear a lot from him that day, uh, which was like that's not out of the normal for either one of us um, during the day. Um, but at one point, I do remember he like texted me. He's like, oh, it's been a really busy day. And then like said some other stuff, which I'm sure you will find in my text. What he said, I don't know. It wasn't obviously anything that was like alerting to me. But that's what I'm saying. Like at this point, like I remember really key things. But if it's like a conversation that I'm like, I don't remember exactly what was discussed. It's because it was probably just bullshit. Like just, just talking to each other. Yeah. Small talk stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I remember he was busy that day and we didn't talk that much. And then I, I clocked out at three is what my time card says. That's what I was showing um, Mark the other day. And I got home to go meet my buddy. One of my. You know, we've always known that we never had a time for her clock in. And hello, Mel Mac. Good to see you. Um, Michelle said, I thought they, she spent time Monday and Tuesday with Jim. I believe at one point, and we're going to have to, we're going over all this, so it'll be brought up, I'm sure. But I think she kind of drags him into a Wednesday also. But again, I'll have to go back. There's another day that she includes Jim. Where, and then in another interview, she says that he wasn't there or something. So again, we'll go through the details again. Hello, Tony and everyone else. Um, so here she said that she offered FBI agent Mark her clock out time, which was three o'clock. We know we never she never clocked in, but then I started thinking about it too. And I was like, three o'clock is such a random time. Like, does anyone, and if you guys get out at three, let me know, you know, what time do you get in and out? She allegedly would be on her way to work, I think around early in the morning, it seemed, but I don't know, three o'clock is such a random time. Like almost like she was like skating out of work that day, but again, it's, can't be proven. And I still want to know about the camera footage. The discovery tells us that there was cameras in the Anadarko parking lot. But of course, none of that is mentioned. Um, Perry says, yes, why the separate tanks and Shanann separate from the kids? There must be some psychology behind this, completely separating all the victims like that. 
there, I mean, it, it could be one person's psychology or it could be multiple people, multiple times. That's kind of where I'm at. Like, I don't think that their time of deaths match and we don't have their time of deaths at all. So that has never been proven to be true or false. So I kind of leave it on the table as a possibility. Um, you know, and, and maybe that's the manner of why everything's different. So I have another theory that kind of, I never had explained this to you, Kelly, because it's kind of newish. The text message that he, um, he sends NK while he's in Nate's house. And it's, she claimed it was about unicorn marshmallows or whatever. Yes. yes. Lucky charm cereal unicorn. Yeah. Yes. And he is using like a ton of caps in, um, kind of like not characteristic of the way that like Chris is. And I feel like at this point I can kind of say that because we've studied this case so closely and he says, OMG, that's ridiculous. And again, there's caps and a ton of exclamation points in here. OMG, that is ridiculous. They would totally freak out. Mm -hmm. The other question I have for you and for chat, um, the oil levels, they give them to us on the day that they were drained and the bodies were recovered. But on Monday, I don't think, and again, maybe I'm wrong, and this is where I kind of want you guys to help me piece this together. What were the oil levels in the tanks on Monday um, at all, like morning? Right. I'm not sure that we, I don't remember seeing that or going into that. And then we go into the water truck guy showing up. Remember when Troy's yeah. there? And we found out that that was a regular, like it was scheduled. Everyone or at Anadarko in the water truck company, like it was you know, already in the books to be done. It wasn't mm -hmm. like they called them that day to, we need you to come out here. No. So a water truck guy comes on Tuesday and this is all before the bodies are recovered. Right. So now I'm thinking round and round, like, is that OMG? That is ridiculous. They would totally freak out text about somebody putting the kids in the tanks through the bottom side hatch mm -hmm. and telling Chris, Bella is in tank, blah, blah, blah. Cece is in tank, blah, blah, blah because they had different names. Remember, he labels them. Yeah. Um, get your butt here and complete this job, aka the explosion, mm -hmm. and you can get them out of here. And right. he, you know, isn't able to get back to work. So is that text about, you know, that being that? Again, we just don't know. And it's just a new kind of theory that I have right now. And now that you bring that up, um, I feel like that's another thing that they never asked Chris, right? Did they ever ask him what? I know they asked NK about that, but did they ask Chris, what were you saying that they would freak out about too? No, no. Yeah, unless they redacted it. Exactly. <laughs> the red flag. And it's like, we go back to this whole, well, why wouldn't they, Chris, speak up and tell them on day one, like I'm in over my head. Like I got myself wrapped up in with this explosion plan, possibly. I, I know some people don't like this theory. Um, and I need your guys' help. They have my kids. Yeah. But he's so non-confrontational. Maybe he was so threatened at that time. Remember, and K, they Google his entire family pretty much the night of their um date that he said that he wished he skipped altogether. Yes days prior, you know, something crazy happened that night. Yeah. On the 11th. And, and that's what Ronnie, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, didn't Ronnie say also recently that the drive from the airport to the police station, he kept saying like, I should have just gone to the game. I wish I had gone to the game. Yeah. And that's also right around like the time in NK's uh, interview when they're kind of discussing that night and she's mm -hmm. talking about macros and what fitness stuff. And she says something about him, like backing out of moving yes. into the apartment. And it's yes. like, was that what he was backing out of, you know? Right. Like, she said he had been all for it. And then that night he did not seem interested in that conversation. And it's like, yeah, was it the apartment for real? Was it something deeper and bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so many questions. I know. And thank you, pointer lover. I really appreciate that. She says, I hate MK too. That is all. Yeah, like <laughs> I know. Them. We got to get through this because there's still some minutes to go with it, but thank you. And thank you, Era. I really appreciate that too. Discovery page 967 comments on oil levels. 
you ask. On Monday, I will look it up right now while I play this. My good, my good friends was coming over my house and he actually has a key to my house. So he was actually there when I got there. And Who's that? my friend, Jim. Um, and so Jim came over and I got home. He was there. He had like just walked in the door. And um, I remember like briefly after he got there, I checked my texts. I mean, briefly after I met up with Jim, I like glanced at my texts and Chris said something about like, my family's not home or like my wife and kids aren't home, like something to that effect. And I told Mark, cause he asked me for a time and I don't have an exact time, but I remember it was like right after I walked. That was a the, text message. Though. Yeah, it's in a text and it's like, it was like briefly after I walked in the door. So based off how long it takes me to get home from work and when I clocked out, it was probably about 3.45 PM, um, texts me and tells me that. And like, he knows when I get off of work too. So he doesn't always bug me if I'm busy. So I don't know what's up with that, but that's when he, that's when he sends that to me. And um, so you're saying that he, he would have known that you would have had your phone available to you and not been at work when he sent you that text message. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. So looking back at it, you think it was purposefully sent at that time? Oh, I'm sure. I'm just asking your feeling on that. Yes. And then he said, call me when you can. And I was there was like, no other communication between you and him that morning on Monday morning. Well, there, so, there was, but it was like random, it, like, but nothing about this event. No, 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 no. About like my mom, my wife's missing or no. my well, anything. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. And you knew he wasn't coming to the office because he had told you that Sunday night. Yeah. And then he goes. And so like, they're only in the office for the morning, like okay. some days it's longer than others, but I would say by a maximum of seven 30, every single morning, they're all gone and they don't come back unless they have like a meeting or something that they have to attend. So like not seeing him for the rest of the day is not like an unnormal thing. Okay. Like, but like I'm saying, like, we don't really, the only reason we interact was kind of like by an off chain. Off -chain. Thing. Like I don't work with him. Um, so he, uh, yeah, we talked like randomly throughout the day, but it was really sporadic and he seemed pretty busy. So we didn't talk too much. Like I said, didn't put too much thought into it. It happens all the time. Um, waited till about three 45, then sent that text to me. And yes, he does know that I will be home at that point or getting home. Like, Did you give Mark Jim's information? No, I would really like not like to involve him in this. He does not know about this. He didn't, he was not like, he doesn't know any of this is occurring. Okay. Like I was literally so he, to, he knows certainly through the media that something's occurred. Yeah. He's we like out of town. He's probably has okay. no idea. He doesn't okay. know who Chris is. Like he's not, I do not know. So he's just a friend of yours. Yes. Um, he does not need to be trying to your this. apartment and doesn't know anything about Chris. Does he know anything about no, Chris? No, okay. nothing. Absolutely yeah, not. We've known Jim for he, yeah. years and years. Yeah. Like no, no just, he's like one of my very good friends. Like my dad knows him. He's a great guy. He just, he, he works at a state a lot. So when he's in town, um, we hang out, but when he's in town and he's off of work to save time. Uh, so I, I give him a key to my house one, cause I trust him. He's one of my best friends. And two, cause, uh, sometimes he will just meet me there because I'll be like, Hey, I'm getting off of work. And then if I get stuck in traffic or something, he ends up like sitting outside of my apartment waiting for me to get off of work. So I'm like, here's a key. And like my dog loves him and stuff. So no, he's not. So involved with the, yes. I don't even the only want reason to I this. And I'm not really concerned uh, about your location. Um, I think we already have your cell phone records. Um, at some point, I did Mark ask you to supply? Uh, did they ask for consent to get cell phone records? That'll probably be done by warrant. If is you want what you just did? Nope. What I'm talking about is your movement. Oh. Um, by GPS or by cell phone tower to show where you were. Obviously, and I don't want to cause you concern. We want to know where you were that day too. You're dating a man who did some egregious stuff, and we want to put, we want to show that you were never near him that day. Period. I mean, you still so, need to track my no, stuff. No, yeah, I mean that that was something we will have to get a warrant for, anyways. To I'm just saying, if if we ask for it, would you? 
have yeah, any objections to that. No, you can have it. So, um, if well, I'm a pretty boring person, well, I don't it sounds like you just went places. to work that day and then you. Sorry, I have to pause her because she's just, she gives me a headache. I'm sorry, but we have to hear her. But it's sometimes I need like a break and listen to your voice for a second. But yeah, no, Era, I looked that page up and it definitely gives the levels, but that is on the day that they were drained. So at that point, which is very concerning um, also, that Troy, the co-worker, was already on scene. He'd already been to the crime scene as well as the water truck guys. So let me just turn her off for a second. Um, but I appreciate you looking this up because I, it is nice to like go over again because this page actually had some other interesting stuff. But yeah, that was on the 16th and they were at a level of, um, let's see, it's described on here. But again, we I don't know what the water truck guy did to the tanks when he went there. Um, we can go through that information. I know Florida Bass Fishing has specifically requested us go through the water truck stuff. And I know you did a whole video on it and we've talked about it before. And on Troy being there, um, it says I, a grid search was performed around the premises of the oil tank, which led to the discovery of a third piece of the rake that was recovered the previous evening. I took custody of the rake piece as evidence from CBI crime scene analysis, Dave Yoakum, and secured it in my vehicle with the other evidence. Subsequently to safety and operational briefing by Brett Schleisler, probably butchered his name, uh, anadarko personnel began evacuating the oil tank. So um, if anyone can find what if they, if they knew or documented what it was on Monday, again, that's information, oddly enough, NK would have had complete access to. Because her job was to kind of monitor the safety and, and all that. Like they have so many tools that monitor the levels. So again, if anyone knows what it was Monday, I'd really like to know. Because it seems like, like there's room for maybe the tanks had been tampered with before they were um, drained. What do you think? I think it's very possible. And I feel like, once again, when we listen to NK's phone interviews, they do ask her a little bit more about like protocol with the tanks and things like that. But I just feel like there's so much more to that. And like you were kind of saying, like, why two different tanks? When did it happen? I know there's a debate, like, are there sensors? Are there not? We talked to somebody who works in an oil field who says there's not. Other people have told us that there would be, um, but there's so mm -hmm. much there that's questionable. And you know what? I Looking back on us digging into the things that we kind of dug into, and not to toot our own horns, but we definitely like raised question to things that other people just weren't, just because we yeah. studied every saying and... For us in our theories, this whole leak at the oil field kind of played a big role. So it was stuff we honed in on and stuff stuck out to us. And um, I believe it, looking back at people who reached out to us and kind of wanted us to sway away from our theories, even in the Facebook groups we were in, we would get like hammered with our opinions because they just weren't the norm at the time very early on. And, and I feel like some of these people were like, put there as like trolls for us to kind of get us away from our theories. Yeah, it was definitely is possible. I think that's how we connected was through a Facebook group where we both were like commenting our opinions on NK being involved possibly. And um, we just got a lot of hate and ended up messaging each other. And here we are <laughs> three years later, <laughs> four, four years later, you know, and more questions, sadly. And I did find in Discovery, okay, so um, of the searchable pages, page 283, the Discovery page is 328, but it says that um, her interview was on 815. So recorded interview of Nicole Kessinger collected on 815, 2018, Philip Jones. And then it says surveillance start and surveillance end, but it doesn't give like a time. It just does the date. So it was the 15th at 536 p.m. Okay, yeah. And and with this yeah. crime taking place on the 13th, the yeah. delay is questionable. And I think, yeah, it happened the 13th. She talked to her dad Tuesday, 
And then I'm going to look when she actually contacted them. Um, and I also, another question that we've always had is, how did NK arrive to the park? We know she brought her dog, but I want to know, did she drive her own vehicle? Did she ride with her dad? Because in her interview um, with Kobach, she was asked to be picked up. So I want to know how she got to the park. Yeah, and I was thinking about, and you guys let me know what you think too, like the whole meeting at the park thing with the FBI agent is interesting to me. And that we know that she got picked up by Kobach, would talk to him on the phone um, for interviews. To me, it seems like she couldn't be seen talking to the police by people, mm -hmm. which kind of goes along with me working towards nowadays that she was given immunity for information. Yeah. Now, was it information to do with other people involved in this sort of plan? You know what I mean? Or was it uh, related to the murders? You know, that's yeah. where I, I don't know like what this valuable information was that she gave them. But I do think that it's interesting kind of looking back at it years later, that whole meeting at the park. Yeah. It's weird. And here's the part where they find the emails. So this is on page 513 of the searchable discovery. And it says it should be noted that approximately three hours before the polygraph was scheduled to begin, 8 a.m., I received a phone call from Anadarko Regional Security Manager Tony Husky. Husky advised that he reviewed Chris's computer, and it was possible that Chris had started a relationship with an Anadarko contracted employee. He located emails between Nicole, Nikki Kessinger, age 30, and um, he attaches the emails to the report. So then Chris is meeting with Coder by 11 a.m., and then again, they're meeting with NK around 5, it seems, all on Wednesday. But I think, yeah, like it was Tuesday. They knew they were taking the things. She calls police at some point on Wednesday, it looks like. Interesting. I'm um, also, um, first off, MK, thanks for gifting five memberships and welcome to the first members of this year. I appreciate that so much. Um, but when, the, let's just carry on with this because this other question could last all night too. So hold on. You came home and you're there at 345. Yeah, like give or take like five yeah. minutes. But yeah, so 345. I meet Jim there. Yeah, I would and totally. So run. Jim is a, understand from an investigative point, he could be a person who could say, yeah, I was there at 345. I don't, he doesn't know Chris. He doesn't know anything. He could say with one phone call, yeah, she came in at 345. Done. Totally. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't have to ask anything more than, hi, Chris, my name's Kevin. I'm, I'm uh, or, or Jim. And I'm not saying Jim you have alone. to give it to Jim. Just leave Jim alone. If, 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 some point, wrapped up in this. if at some point I needed Jim's info to, let's say we couldn't find your phone records. Would you you can have them. Was? I will give them to you. Would you tell me who Jim was? If, if I you had to. Okay. I don't really want to involve him in this. So it's not fair to him. That's not, no. If I do not have to do that. That's fine. Um, yeah. So anyways, Chris was like, call me. And this is the 345 text. Yeah. He sent me like a few. There, were, I think there was three of them and I don't remember what the other one said, but something about like, yeah, my family's gone or I don't remember verbatim, but call me when you can or have call me when you have a chance, something to that effect. And so when he told me, call me, I was like kind of alerted where I was like, okay, what's going on? You know? Um, but first when he told me like his family was like not home, that didn't really seem odd to me that his family wasn't home. It was really vague. I'm like, okay, like, are they at the grocery store? Like elaborate. And so, you know, and then, but he says, call me like, it's like an emergency, but then just says, but they're not there. And so I'm like, really like floored by the, well, not like floored, but just kind of like, he says, call me. So I'm concerned. And then he's really vague. So I'm like. Maybe he just wants to talk to me. I don't know. I think it took me a little while to like really process the severity of the situation just because this is not something that you expect to see every day. And the way that he talked to me made me believe that this is not what was going on at all. Okay, so you make a phone call to him and you guys have a conversation. I did. I stepped outside 
Um, ish. I mean, well, like, I think I actually interacted with Jim for like probably a good 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, he's my guest. He's in my house. Um, so I don't think I called him right away, but like, I mean, I'm trying to balance the fact that I have my friend here and then Chris is saying that something needs to be addressed. But to me, it didn't sound like an emergency. I mean, it's all the time. Like people That's are home right it. now, you know, so it just, um, that part to like, me. Oh my God, I have to Sorry, that part to me has always bothered me. Like something needs to be addressed. Like why does he, the way she words it just gives me chills. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear that again. Sorry. No, you just said you don't like to hear it. <laughs> okay, hold on. How, it was like she just stated it, right? Yeah, like it was, it just happened where um, it was talking about the text and then Chris is over here like something needs to be addressed. Like, it just was creep. It creeps me out the way she words that. And Leticia, I definitely think that that's a possibility. The meeting at the park was not officially recorded as it would have in an interview room. This is where she gave the bombshell information and negotiated her blanket immunity deal turning on CW, which kind of goes along with um, people's comments and chat kind of stating that she kind of runs the interview when she's with Kobach and her father's there. And he's very like assertive and running the interview too and telling things that Kobach can and can't question. And, you know, this whole um, leave Jim alone thing was in that interview. And it, it does appear that what has been redacted and obviously would only be between her lawyer and all that is this whole immunity thing that possibly could have taken place like right in that interview. And it was set that she would give whatever information was bombshell. And then that's why when we hear her with CBI, FBI kind of tossed her over to them and then CBI tosses her over to Baumhofer things just escalate and get worse because it's like she got more and more comfortable with the fact that like, it didn't matter what she said, she's already good. So when we're going back and we're listening to her, we're like, wait a minute, why is she, that's weird, that's weird, or that's sketchy, but she's freely saying it without a care in the world because she was already safe at that point. Yeah, that's very possible. Or something along those lines, pretty much. But I don't know. I think this whole immunity theory is just is sinking more and more as I think that that's what took place. Like, um, doesn't make sense for them to be so tiptoe-ish with her. To take this call, it's an emergency. No, no. I mean, it just, it was the way he said it. And I was like, okay. So I... um. I remember hanging out with Jim for a while and then I stepped outside and I made a call like out on my back patio and I called him and he didn't answer the phone and then he texted me back or no did he answer the phone I don't remember I think he missed my call and then he called me back or he just answered either way it was a very short talk to him where he was just like I have to go the cops are here and I don't remember if he said that on the phone or over text. I don't okay. even, I'm so tired. That's fine. You don't, but either way, different. like it's the cops, context. yeah, I mean, you guys will figure it out. The cops, the cops are here. And I'm just like, all right. And then I remember we were like in, a, like we were texting, but I was like hanging out with my company. So it wasn't like a nonstop text. It was just kind of like, I would check my phone every once in a while and we would communicate with each other. And he was just saying like, they weren't there and that her friend Nikki was there and that her friend Nikki had called the cops. And I'm like, why would this girl call the cops? And like, I honestly do not remember the order of operations on all of this, but I'm pretty sure the majority of our conversation that night until my friend Jim left the house, which was probably pretty late. I don't even know what time, like nine or 10 was all via text. So you should have this via text. Okay. So she's stating Monday night, Jim left around nine or 10. And she said pretty late. How is nine or 10 late? Right. And yeah, order of operations is definitely yes. a weird term to use. It's almost like there was a plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. I mean, and that plan could vary in so many ways. 
Yep. It's like, I don't think we started talking again on the phone until like after my company left. Um, and he was like, uh, I don't know. He just started like giving me details about stuff and I don't remember what order, but he was saying like, Nikki was really upset and that the cops were there and that they were like searching the house. And I was just like, what, you know, like what, why? And he was telling me that, um, they had like had a disagreement or something like that. And then, um, he told me like, she was going to go to a friend's house and I was like, okay, well maybe she left, you know, maybe she just like went to her friends. And then I think he, I don't remember, but I think he was the one that told me that her cell phone and her purse were still there. I think he told me that. He told you her I, cell phone and purse were still there? I think he did. I don't remember. What's the significance of that in your mind at that time? At that point, I thought this woman was really trying to get out of this house. Okay. That's what I thought. So Cyber Sleuth, I mean, that's a good point. Her bombshell information wasn't even in discovery. What's the point of her immunity? And there are things that are sealed as far as, um, you know, the, the security records for the house, security alerts, um, the autopsies are fully sealed. Well, not fully, I'm sorry. The children are definitely like, we barely have anything from the children's autopsies. Um, but that's a good question. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, what if it is according to like, if you're going down the explosion theory, like this group of extremists, which we've gone through and I've got articles linked in the description box that are part of, you know, they're pretty much called eco terrorists. And if there was an explosion plan, maybe she gave information related to that you know, or like what this whole plan was. There's even a theories of them playing with the stock oil stocks. Maybe they'd given information related to that too. And that's yeah. why it just kind of mentions that Brittany girl, which was NK's friend that mm -hmm. was making comments on Facebook about oil stocks and when to play them. Like, I don't know that, but that is a good point. Like what would she have been, what was the bombshell information regarding this case, Chris Watts one, you know? Yeah, exactly. And the fact that Danielle was there that weekend as well, like, yeah, definitely an interesting, like, rabbit hole in theory to kind of ponder. For sure. And thank you, Johnny, for the coffee. We're going to go for about 27 more minutes. I do have, like, a few things from the discovery to look at, but I do want to kind of look at this for a couple minutes too because this is where we left off last
out to this. Again, touching things without gloves on. But I think, I don't know if they show it in this one, but we know from the discovery that this car has a cargo area in this trunk spot. So what that is, is you guys probably have some in your SUVs. The trunk area has like a, a tab that you pull and then you can store stuff underneath. So it's like right underneath where all this is, is like a little storage area. And I believe that's where they found Chris's new work boots. Yeah, that sounds right. I'll look it up. Which is crazy, you know, know, because that was very honed in on by Troy. Yes. And even at one point, Chris mentions how he brings extra clothes and shoes, like boots or something, because sometimes one day he spilled oil on himself and he had like a, a migraine for like days or something like that. Um, but I just think it's an interesting spot to be kind of to hide the new work boots. Um, but they, we don't see it here on camera. But let me play this couple seconds more and then switch to the discovery page. Something regarding August 10th, which is, you know, kind of a significant lead up to where they're at today. And he just kind of like tosses it. Yeah, because that's he said he went to Target that day, I believe. I don't remember, but I think he, yeah, I made a video on that. I actually was watching some of it a while ago. And I do think he said that they went to Target. But then he also said they went to Target sunday as well it was weird i can't remember exactly but you're right like august 10th let's just touch this and throw it away or you know <laughs> he's like what's that and he's like i don't know something for chris yeah. august 10th like it's like <laughs> three days before the whole family's missing nothing to stay here <laughs> oh like, my gosh on. is that coonrod because i feel i feel bad criticizing coonrod i don't yeah. know why i know but <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah. that, whatever that was, like, it might be in discovery. Maybe they documented it, but what? And I think he said he had to get his, his glasses fixed too or something. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll look for that video and put it in chat for you guys to watch after this. But I went through and like pulled out what he said he did August 10th and used discovery as well. Excellent. Yeah, that's um, interesting to kind of look back through. And, and and he had his glasses fixed and fine in pictures, I think even the flight home from North Carolina. So I don't think we ever found out how his glasses broke. I don't think so either. All right. So this page obviously is the page um, that indicates some th items found in the truck that was taken as evidence um, located in the front passenger side door panel was a green disposable cigarette lighter. So this is something that we've kind of always looked at as, you know, that's interesting and pondered exactly what that meant or who it was for. Some people think that it had to do with the explosion. Other people think that it means there was someone who smoked cigarettes or possibly weed rode in the passenger side of that truck. Now, they were only supposed to have people that they trained ride with them. So it wasn't typically a thing where they had, like, um, I think he was pretty much by himself all day. Unless he was with Troy, like, I don't know, what do you, what do you remember about who was allowed to ride in their cars and stuff? Okay, I feel like they said that they did not like people to ride in their cars unless it was for work purposes. And then even they didn't like them to drive the work truck anywhere, but to work or home, but that sometimes if they had to go pick up dinner or whatever, 
the boss was fine with that. Yeah. So when it comes to this disposable lighter, we know Shanann didn't smoke. Um, obviously, it's just a pondering thing that was found on that would indicate that whoever was riding on that side was comfortable enough to kind of hang around and leave something in the side panel or was there long enough to leave it. You know, like if you were just lighting up for something quick, like why would you, you would think you would find it like on the seat or on the floor more so than in the side panel where it was kind of like kept, you know what I mean by that? Right. I agree. And you know, whose prints, whose fingerprints were found on it. Exactly. We never got the answers. Yep. And we don't know if NK smoked either way. Like I've heard a lot of people say it sounds like she has a smoker's voice. You know, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I'm just saying throughout yeah. our years, I have seen that comment. So mm -hmm. does Troy smoke? Like we, we don't know. Right. Um, Troy <laughs> says something about having bad teeth because of Mountain something. Dew. Oh yeah. Mountain Dew. Yeah. Oh. I know it's so yeah. bad. But anyways, um, so yeah, who's like and to think they're pulling touch DNA from items and cases now. Again, this is years later. It technology obviously is is quick, but they're picking up touch DNA from like sweat sometimes. Yeah. So would what could they have picked up from this lighter? We'll never know. But it, it's a pondering thing that it was there. If it was for the explosion, I don't know. I feel like you would use like a grill lighter for something like massive that you were going to do. I don't know. I, I guess I'm not an arsonist, so I don't <laughs> know. Like, but it being on the side panel to me, it makes it seem like someone rode with him that was comfortable to like be in there a while. I don't know. And other people have said that. And again, I don't know what I'm seeing in Nate's footage to this day. Yeah. When people zoom and all that. I'm like, I try so hard, but I'm like, I don't see anything. Um, people have stated that they see someone kind of like, it looked like they lit something quick, like maybe a bowl for weed or maybe mm -hmm. like a, a cigarette. I don't know. Um, but people say they see that. So it, it's just interesting, especially with the dog handler claiming that she smelled smoke in the office. And we know that the the weed smoke, I'm sorry, not smoke even. She just said marijuana smell. Yeah, like which makes you wonder, like, there's a reason she said that. Yes. Did she smell marijuana, you know? Yes. And, you know, it's just with the office looking the way it did when we went through it and how it was kind of a red flag and for that smell to be in there. And then this side panel with this lighter, I mean, again, it, it's, it, we don't have to make up things to make this case like puzzling. It just is. Right. You know, um, it could be nothing. It could absolutely be nothing. Let me see what I want to show you that one. Um, I guess I'll do this one first because it does pertain to, the truck and what scent was um, found in there, which I think is important to kind of go through again. So just real quick, I'm not going to read this whole thing. And sorry to circle back real fast. I'm just scrolling through my Watts playlist. Also mm -hmm. on August 10th, I made two videos. I think I messed up on the first one, but I made two different videos about August 10th in Kay's phone data. I think like her phone data kind of showed she was not at work all day on August 10th. Which, once again, that's the day he met Troy McCoy. And then they discovered the leak with, um, what was the other one's name? Um, hmm. Cody? Cody, yeah. yeah. So, like, NK's data was interesting from August 10th as well. Yeah, so then that means that um, that thing that was found in the Lexus is, is part of the puzzle. You know, you right. can't deny it. I mean, maybe they did log it. We might find that there was a receipt logged when and for information regarding the evidence log for the Lexus. Maybe it's in there. Mm -hmm. But it's just interesting to see, I guess, firsthand on body cam, which I know that some cops must like, it's probably a love-hate relationship. Like for liability, it's good to be like, no, I said this, the defendant's lying or this criminal lying to have things on body cam. But then other things like when he's just like, hmm, what's that? Oh, something for Chris, you know, and just talk. Yeah. Kind of like, <laughs> probably like, oh God. Mm -hmm. So 
Jane is there with her dog. This is for the truck. Um, hold on. Jane stated the dog did not alert for any human remains inside the vehicle, but the dog caught the scent of one of the three missing parties. So I always thought that it was only like, or that they found the scent of the missing parties, but here it says one of the three. Does that mean that like, what does that mean? That's interesting. Cause I don't understand like how the number one, the dog could discern that it was only one of the three and how like Jane would be able to pick up on that. I don't right, like the dog's that. not going to say this is so and so's, not so and so's. Yes. There's not like different alerts for different scents, you know, like that doesn't make sense to me. Hi, Zawoki. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Era asks a question that I've been looking at differently recently too. Why was everyone criticizing Jane? And I think because Jane finds the most interesting things that pertain to other people being involved. Yeah. Or something okay. bigger. And then, like I said, when we came out with this information and theory that we had trolls trying to tell, oh, Jane didn't know anything. Look at the way she. And there were some questionable things that she did as far as like the dog's trying to say something. But this is all review that they could have done on body camera. So they would have said like, oh, wow, look how the dog acts here and there and, and like gone over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just think that everyone criticized Jane, but she doesn't deserve that. Like she found some of the things that we've honed in on and been like, whoa, did you hear her say that? Like when she said that she didn't think that Shanann left willingly or something. Yeah. And, and just, um, so that was another thing that I think that there's certain trolls that have put, been put out on social media regarding this case. And one of the things is um, that Jane was incompetent. And I don't think that's the case at all. Yeah, she was discredited too soon in the case. And that's suspicious to me. I totally agree. Yeah. So again, if anyone can kind of give their opinion about this whole page describing the one scent of the three um, found in the truck. And again, this is a live scent. This is not a cadaver scent at all in the truck. So for those who think that Shanann was killed in the house and taken out in the truck, um, the truck rides pretty long, 45 plus minutes. Yeah. And by the time he was out there at Servies, um, I don't know. I just don't think that she was taken in that truck. Um, let me see. I don't think there was anything else I wanted to hone in on this page. Um, but just to kind of show that one of the scents of the three missing was found in the truck and it wasn't cadaver. Okay. Moving on. Mm -hmm. And some and of the stuff. No, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. I was going to say real quick, I linked both of those videos. One is what does Chris Watts say he did his last weekend without Shanann and then Watts case, August 10th, finding the leak at Serby, but I'll relink them at the very end. So when you guys, oh, awesome. them, then you can get to them. Thank you. All right, let me find, this was regarding, um, again, this kind of talks about them using like aluminol and stuff and finding no trace of it places. So this is about Servi, the thief hatch, which is, you know, huge when we're talking about trace evidence of blood with the theory that the district attorney and the state has presented to us. And I guess, Chris himself in the prison interview, um, which he changed up from his initial uh, admission, I guess you could call it. So it says blue star latent blood reagent, reagent was applied to the thief hatch of each tank after positive and negative presumptive test of the reagent had been done with expected results. So I'm going to read that again because I, I'm confused what this whole after positive and negative presumptive test of the reagent had been done with expected results. Like, what does that mean? So they applied Blue Star to the thief hatch of each tank, and it's saying after positive and negative presumptive test. So what does that mean? Because like, what was I know I'm trying to process this. So 
after positive and negative presumptive tests. So are they saying that there were tests and one showed positive and one negative? And then they're saying that they were expecting with the expected results. I don't. Okay. Um, Deneen says positive for some things, negative for others. Okay. So this is supposed to be um, picking up, I guess, blue star, like aluminol and blue. I don't know if it's the same as blue star, but this is sp specifically for blood. So it's supposed to show, I think, like um, iron levels and stuff like that. Like that's what makes it light up or something. Uh, Melmex says it means BS. <laughs> yeah, it, it means failure on the case. <laughs> and I just don't, un I guess... Yeah, I guess it, it appears to me that a test was done, this whole like expected, I don't know, it's weird, expected, re done with expected results. I, I don't get that. Yeah. And then Ara said, is it about the rake? Keep on reading. So they do describe the rake on here. Um Okay, but yeah, the top part's about the tanks. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Connecting. Um, and again, yeah. I don't want to be graphic, but like, I just don't see how they would have gone through the tanks without blood. I mean, unless they were longly deceased, right? And I, I hate talking about this, but this is true crime. You know, it's just part of it. I have an opinion that people just don't like, and right. I just don't think that they went through the top. There would be, yeah. like, it wouldn't be this whole, like, wishy-washy with these presumptive tests and, like, this verbiage here that makes no sense. Like, it basically comes across to me that I can't tell if there was blood or not blood found on that hatch. Mm -hmm. If it went down the way they claim, then we would need to know, like, why. And in the drone footage, you don't see anything. And doesn't Ronnie recently say he doesn't believe they went through there? Yes, yes. Well, again, that's take that how you will. But Chris's dad also does not believe they went through the top. And then going back, like circling back to the water truck, it's almost like you wonder who scheduled the water truck. Did they schedule the water truck on that specific day for any sort of reason? If there was an explosion plan, when were they truly planning on doing it? Like, was the water truck guy going to, like, be part of the trigger? Like, once again, you we just do not know how deep that this really could be. Right. Yeah, I know. And there was a lot of things that, you know, if this went to trial, they would have put the water truck guy up on the stand. Oh, yeah. Possibly. And been like, and did Troy. you see this co-worker here on the scene? And did he lie to you and say that he was looking for, you know, like all this would have just been so crazy if it went to trial. And you just reminded me of something else I was thinking when it came to the dog scents. And on the body cam, Chris describes, you know, like stuff that he was going to give them to find their scent, like for the dogs to sniff. And the dog, it said somewhere in the discovery that the um, cops pointed out the, the girl's shoes that were on the back deck and like asked if they could use them or whatever. And he said that they were wet because of the uh, water balloons at the party Sunday. So if you're thinking like me, that the children were not a part of Chris's plan. You know, if he had it in his mind that he was going to kill his children on Monday, why is he drying out their shoes from a Sunday party? Right. That's interesting. It just doesn't make sense. And I know sometimes things just don't make sense. But again, this whole page here about this blood on the hatch, um, feel free, replay viewers, let me know what you think about that verbiage or what that means. It does kind of seem inconclusive, which with everything that's been told to us, it shouldn't be inconclusive because some people explain Bella's injuries in her autopsy report from her being shoved in the tank. And it's like, but we don't know if that's true. You know, that right. her blood force trauma and scrapes up down her backside and stuff like that to me sounds like someone like pulled her and dragged her and like forced her to be somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we just don't know in a medical examiner for the defense team, 
would have gone up there and for the prosecution, obviously, and they would have given their interpretations of the in injuries. And another thing is talk about different placements for of the girls and the mother and, but, and different means of death even. Her, because Shanann was strangled, the girls were likely asphyxiated according to Cece's autopsy. Yeah. Um, which was always interesting that you pointed out that verbiage because it didn't even sound like they even had a hundred percent like it like who uses the term likely in medical like stuff. Yes. Yeah. That's always bothered me. Cause it was different for Bell or Bella's. It seemed like it was more conclusive for that. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I don't know. Real it's quick. Angie J70 says, why doesn't anyone talk about how poison crude oil is? You can't breathe it and it'll make you sick. So when the hatches were open, there were fumes. And yes, like we have talked about that. Chris mm -hmm. has even talked about like sometimes having to change clothes. He gets a headache. So I'm with you on that. Like that's just a whole nother factor that would have been kind of questioned. And remember yeah. that NK said she was feeling sick in one of her interviews. Yes, Ara. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, and Jim. Jim was also sick, I believe. Yes, and that sounds familiar. Yes. Yes, Karen. I believe because he's a liar and covering things up still, I believe that he's he's already changed his theory so many times that I don't believe a single one of them. And his whole theory about knowing weeks prior that he wrote to Cato that this was going to happen to the the girls included. Like, I just don't believe it. Yeah. I believe he like performed for Cato's book. Like I, I do have the second version of her book where she put his actual letters. I have read them. I have taken notes. Um, I don't believe everything in there for sure from Chris. And I just believe that he was imagining and like coming up with things just to put it onto paper. That's where I'm at. You know, I don't mm -hmm. believe everything he wrote in the letters. I don't believe everything in his verbal confession. I do definitely don't believe everything that Cato conveyed that Chris allegedly told her. That is totally out of my research realm <laughs> because it's Cato. Um, but yeah, even the letters, I don't buy everything. Yeah, I agree. Um, and yeah, the vomit, yes. there was the first discovery, like before they started redacting stuff, I 100% remember seeing that there was vomit and I believe a photo, same thing with the meat or the temperature or whatever on the refrigerator. I swear I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and people remember it. Like we, we know that there was fecal matter out there. We're at the site that, and see, I can't, you can't even search anything related to vomit or um, other words related to that in the discovery. It just does not come up anymore. Um, and like you said, the, the photo of the chicken on the grill, remember? Yes. I was, saw so that. So many things that people who jump into this case, you guys have no idea. Like there was stuff we were looking at and confused about that they just started taking away from the public. Yeah. Adrian says she was already sick before the murders. Fair. I know. <laughs> Well, yeah, there was Chris's, um, yeah, he went to the bathroom at the a different survey site. He didn't go at 319. Right. He, it was like the 529 or whatever it was. We've yeah. dug into it. But did they come back and say that that actually was his or was that just Troy saying it? Well, there is a photo of it in the discovery. Um or at least there was, I know I have a photo of like, not the actual, but like the burial of it, but I don't think they ever like 100% tested it and made sure it was Chris's, but I do think Chris said he went and then Troy said it. And then there's a photo of it. I, I don't remember Chris ever stating it, but I know that there's a picture in that Troy's, I don't know. It's just interesting that it's just one of those things like, what was that all about? You know what I mean? Yes. Like some people get like a nervous like stomach. Um, you know, usually people kind of vomit when they're nervous. Again, that's interesting too. Like we're thinking about the, the, there's nothing related to fecal matter in the discovery. <laughs> I had to do that live. 
because I would have done it right when I got off the live and kind of dug into it. <laughs> but you know, this whole theory about, uh, well, not even theory, like I 100% agree with you, like there was vomit stated that was redacted on the catwalk specifically. Do you, do you remember it like catwalk? And like, yeah, maybe not. Maybe it was outside of the tanks too, like on the ground too. But all I know is it was there and it's gone. Was that related to the fumes and somebody got sick and threw up? Or was that related to like a nervous stomach too? Mm -hmm. Or even drug use, I think, you know, it's always, it's weird about what stuff they were into. So somebody said, never seen chicken on the grill pick. Yeah. There was a picture of a thermometer inside a freezer that got redacted. I believe four chicken breasts grilling on Chris's grill. Was that who's it? Yeah, was? That sounds right. Because Chris took a photo of chicken breasts on the grill and um people who um yeah because like in our very early lives we were like did anyone else see this photo and people were like yes we remember seeing that but yeah it was a photo that Chris took I believe on August 12th on that Sunday but I'd have to double check yeah, and people in chat or and comment below on replay if you remember these That's pics too, so any of them. Because it's just interesting to go back and remember. Yeah, Mel Max said there was four chicken breasts. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was um, trying to find the date. But yeah, it was at 1846 hours. A photo of four chicken breasts on a barbecue grill was created in Chris's image file. Um. And it was right after, so at 840 or 1844, I'm so bad with military time. 1844 is when he documented the refrigerator setting in the refrigerator. We don't know if it was upstairs or basement. And then 1847, so three minutes later, he takes a photo of the four chicken breasts on a grill. I'm going to find what day it is. <laughs> and... You have a video talking about and images of the alleged vomit, too. So I think people should check out that just to kind of get caught up on these little details that people might not remember or know. Um, there was something else I wanted to pull up. And the video. OK, this was, yeah, August 12th. So that's Sunday. So what time is 846, 1846 military time? I'm sure someone in chat knows, but I'll Google. <laughs> I cannot do it. Let's see. And the thing about the temperature pick, it's like, why would they, you know, redact that? That can go along with this whole, like, she was sedated or drugged and taken out on the, in that state. And that's why she didn't fight back or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so that those type of chemicals kind of have to be at a certain temperature. I'm acting like I know how to like sedate someone, but it's <laughs> like, we've always wondered like what that was about. <laughs> See, people in chat are saying that they remember it. They remember those two pictures. So he takes a photo at 640. What time do people say that was? Okay, 646. So he takes a picture at 640. Hold on. <laughs> I'm like stuck on this now it's three minutes between when he took the refriger the refrigerator pick and then the grill okay 1844 is the refrigerator 1847 is the chicken breast and that could have been the fridge upstairs or downstairs to be that kind of far apart in time yes three very minutes. true because if it was downstairs he could definitely get to the grill in three minutes does anyone remember what temp it was at I do not. And the discovery doesn't tell us. Of course. But yeah, like why take those pictures? And then again, interesting, like he was at 1556 searching for the Periculean volcano. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, just fascinating, not to, to like derailing the conversation. Over yeah, here. the way he, it was jumping around to such random things. And then like one time he's like, Googling stuff about like a gemstone. And then another minute he's Googling that new Audi, like SUV. Yes. It's like, why was he thinking he was about to purchase something huge and items um, and looking at volcanoes and stuff? So 
Somebody says, I think it was the downstairs freezer. We have pictures inside that downstairs freezer. Mm hmm. I'm just trying to think like or do we just have the fridge part because there's a like beer in that picture i'm thinking pretty much sure i'm pretty sure we have the freezer too from the body cam and it's hard to know 100 percent because they never showed us inside the upstairs fridge or freezer right and they looked through like the the pantry and stuff so it's just like did they redact that yes you're so right and that's another thing, too, is like, did they redact it because it shows he did pack their lunches or something? Yeah, or it is because something was in the freezer that was questionable. You know, mm -hmm. we just don't know. Yeah. And then the coolers, that's a whole nother conversation. Like, yeah, <laughs> turquoise said, dude was weird. That's true. <laughs> I know. I know. Especially because um, one of the pages that I X'd out of and we're pretty much done, but just leaving it on this point is when they showed up to do like the cadaver stuff, they said it smelled hugely like chemicals, um, vacuumed. It looked like there were, I mean, there was vacuum lines on the floor and Chris had sports center on. Yeah. So it's like this whole stuff is going down no matter which way you think it was headed in that, at that point in time, he's watching sports center. And yeah, people in chat are saying that Betty mentioned the barbecue. I just looked it up and it, yeah, it says Betty offered information about a barbecue they had around 1900 hours on Sunday evening, 8 12, and never heard or saw Bella or Cece during that time. She did see Watts a couple times as he was cooking something on the grill, but the girls never appeared when he walked outside. Weird. Yeah. Especially because any chance, although when you're using a grill, like, do you want the kids outside or, but they had like their grill up on the deck and the kids stuff down below like, where it was safe. So you would just think that that'd be the perfect time to be like, oh, go outside on the playground or whatever. Yeah, but it's like a summer evening, you know. But I guess they were like back from the party and their shoes were all wet. It's just, it's hard to kind of picture that scene because even Frank Sr.'s recounts of that night and um, he FaceTimed with one of the girls, but not the other one, right? Yeah, I believe he said he saw he saw one of the girls eating some Jolly Rancher Laffy Taffy type thing, but then he heard the other. So he only physically saw one, and but he did hear the other one. I can't remember like which one he saw versus heard though. I want to say he saw Bella and heard Cece, but I can't remember I, for sure. I think that's right. But again, you guys let us know, comment below. We're going to have to dig through some more stuff still. Um, please like and subscribe and follow CDT's TikTok if you want more Watts content in um, TikTok form. And yeah, I don't know. Was there anything else you wanted to say? Um, I was just going to put in those two videos into chat again real fast. Okay, okay. yes. Okay. So check out these videos that kind of um, elaborate further on discussions that we've had tonight and topics that we've discussed. Um, just reading your guys' comments. I appreciate you guys all being here and you being here, Kelly. Always yeah, of course. pleasure to have you. Um, everyone loves when we team up. So it's always a good time. Like I, I have these things set aside specifically to show you live and I love getting your reaction live. So, yeah, I, I mean, I will never tire of discussing this case. Um, I don't necessarily think we're ever going to get the justice that we want to get, but I think that the fact that we are able to talk about it and we are able to use the little bit that they've given us, we should be able to use our voice. And I enjoy doing that with you and everybody in chat, because this is just so frustrating the way it was handled. Yeah. And it's almost relieving to know that we're not the only ones that are like looking at the stuff like, wait, why am I reading yeah. this sentence three times? And I'm still struggling. Um, but I'm at a point where I'm like, if you guys see it as something, explain it to me. Like if you were more educated on this topic or whatever, like this blue star chemical, you know, it's just seemed kind of like, why wouldn't it have just come out directly saying that there was blood positively found on the thief hatch? It's just kind of weird, you know? Exactly. Agreed.
That's another thing real quick before we go. Another image that I feel like I have seen was the blonde hair in the hatch, but I don't remember like, I think that's gone too. But again, I just feel like some of that could be like, I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore. Well, if we never got an indication of whose hair it was, you exactly. know, um, that could have been a, a, somebody that had looked in the hatch. That could have been the girls yes. up there. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it, the blonde hair was Cece's and she went down that hatch. You know what I, I mean? Like as much as I, I don't want to just question every little thing, I'm at the point where I do and I'm realizing yeah. like that doesn't necessarily mean it, that that's what happened. And you're so right. Like they never, it, it, the way it's written in Discovery is not like blonde hair was found in the hatch. We tested it and it did come back as belonging to a female, you know, of the family or CC or however, but yeah. Um, see beard freak says there was a photo of the hair at one point. I don't remember. <laughs> I do remember on um, in the discovery that there's like a image that like shows, like it has like a number and all that, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just losing it at this point because <laughs> <laughs> we've been looking into things, but people yeah. agree. People yeah. see it, they've seen it. So I, I will, I trust you guys. Yeah. yeah. And that's another thing like Arab pointed out. I mean, you kind of have to go there because we don't have the answers to like whose hair it was and they redact a photo of it allegedly. She yeah. Said, could have, the hair could have been placed there. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they had already gone through Cece's room. Right. They had taken stuff of hers for things to be um, smelled, etc. So, I mean, I there's things about CBI in this case and in John Bonet case that I've raised my eyebrows to. So I can't say that this isn't possible, and we've kind of felt like it was um, possible. Mm hmm. Agree. Sadly, but we've seen it in even the OJ case. You know, stuff gets planted. Yes, definitely. Because at that point, they already had Chris's confession of them going down the tank. So they needed something. Right. Again, who knows for sure. But I appreciate you guys being here tonight. And we'll talk very soon. Friday, I think I'm going to do a Delphi live stream. Um, I had to take a break from it. I'll explain when I'm live. But that'll be the next time I go live. And I hope to see you again soon, CDT, and to talk to everybody again very soon. I hope we all have a good um, 2024. Yes. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye.